Muslim says, it is the link between you and Allah, Salah. When you come down in sujood, in prostration, it is a position that you cannot be closer to Allah than it is the closest you can get to Allah in sajda. Aqrabu ma yakunu abdu li rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest that a person, a slave can get to Allah is in the condition of prostration. So increase your prostration. Take your time. Take your time in prostration. No need to rush. If you rush, what will happen? You are destroying your link with Allah. Your link is weak. So another narration says the difference between one who believes and one who doesn't is actually salah. So make sure that you fulfill it correctly. People might think, well, you know, I'm lazy. I don't know five daily prayers. What benefit am I going to get from it? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, when your back is aching or when you have a problem with your knees and you go to the doctor, they tell you to bend and they tell you to do this and to do that and to stretch and so on. You will do it with such happiness because you know, my doctor was telling me to do something that's going to help me. Much more important than all of that is what Allah is telling you. Your creator is telling you. Your creator is telling you, I have made this for you. It's a gift. It's a gift for you. Consider it a gift. You are going to go into the hereafter. What do you want? You want paradise? I have it. I will give those who try. Try. Try your best, my brothers and sisters. We are weak. Sometimes we falter. Don't let shaitan drop you. Don't let shaitan crack you. No. Work hard. Keep on working. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Your salah in order. Then we have zakah. Zakah is actually the charities that we give. The dues that we give. We give the poor. We reach out to those who don't have. In Islam, one of the best Muslims is he or she who is concerned about the well-being of others. Not just yourself. You should not be selfish. You should not be a person who only thinks of yourself. If that's the case, you've lost the plot. You don't understand why Allah has created all the others around you. He made them in order to help you to get paradise by helping them, by serving them. Allah continues to help a worshiper for as long as he or she is busy helping another. We've heard this so many times. Why don't we reach out into our pockets and help someone? Help the needy, your family members your community members, those around you, those whom you see. That's why the Quran, Surah Al-Duha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, As for the beggar, the one who's asking you, don't rebuke them. If you have something, you give them respectfully. If you don't want to give for some reason, respect them. Do not disrespect or rebuke. You can turn away nicely. But you don't have to disrespect and rebuke a person who's asking. It could have been the other way around. Number one. Number two, that could be a test from Allah. Just watching, what are you going to do? Are you going to give or not? And if you don't give, are you going to abuse or not? So my brothers and sisters, it's very, very important for us to understand. Giving out charity benefits us more than it benefits the person we gave. Remember that. Giving out a charity benefits us. That's why don't be haughty or arrogant. When Allah has given you wealth, the test is greater than when he has not given you wealth. The test is far greater because you have so much. What are you going to do with it? May Allah make us generous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who give. So my brothers and sisters, thereafter, we have a beautiful month of Ramadan. What is it all about? Discipline. Taqwa, achieving the consciousness of Allah. I need to build my relation with Allah. I keep myself hungry from dawn to dusk. Why? Because I want Allah to be pleased with me. I want to realize, number one, that I'm going to obey Allah's instruction. When Allah says, eat, I eat. Don't eat, I won't eat. Eat now, I'll eat now. Don't eat now, I won't eat now. If Allah has told me to stay away from halal and I can stay away from halal for the whole month during daylight hours, Surely I can stay away from haram for the whole of the 11 months after that. I'm learning to control myself. There is water in front of me during the day. I say, no, I'm not having it. Why? It will displease Allah. Why then do we drink alcohol later on? 
when we could stay away from water. Look at the control that Allah is helping us to achieve. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So my brothers and sisters, something absolutely important is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he asks us to do something, it is a favor for us. It is of benefit to me and to you. It doesn't help Allah. It doesn't benefit Allah. It benefits us, you and I. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us. So let's learn to be charitable and generous. The month of Ramadan is a month of generosity. The pathway to paradise is actually paved with beautiful tiles of charity and generosity. As you are walking down the path, if you are generous, you put another tile. If you are, for example, reaching out to people generous in a way that you have helped so many others, then you are laying your path to paradise. But if you are selfish all on your own, what will happen? You will gather a lot of wealth. Perhaps when you die, nothing helped you. It went to other people. Perhaps they might be fighting for that wealth. Your own children might stop talking to each other because of a few million that you might have left. If even you have left those millions. So rather you spend, you be charitable. Allah provides sustenance for everyone in his or her own capacity. Allah provides sustenance for everyone in his or her own capacity. When Allah gives you, he knows why he's giving you. When he has kept it away from you, he knows why he has kept it away from you. Don't ever question the decree of Allah. Keep working hard. Bring yourself closer to Allah. Sometimes Allah takes away from you. For example, you lost your job. Now there is a point of stress because you are looking for a job. You need money because you have bills to pay. You have a family to look after. You have so much. Remember, if you lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have fallen into the trap of shaitan. Keep on looking, keep on trying, keep on praying, keep on having hope and keep on going. A day will come if it is a month later or six months later. A year later or two years later but a day will come when Allah will bless you with such a beautiful job that you will say it was worth waiting for two years in the meantime you are stressed you are depressed don't allow that to happen if you're a mu'min your pathway to paradise is built by accepting the decree of Allah Taqdeer. something went wrong with your business you're a businessman you suffered a loss and a second loss and a third loss for as long as you are patient, Allah knows that he's going to open the door for you. Don't allow yourself to slide into sin. Keep yourself steadfast. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam. One problem after another, a third after the second and the fourth after the third, one after the other. His brothers were jealous of him. They took him to the well. They first decided to kill him. Then they decided to throw him in. When someone saved him, they decided to sell him. When they sold him, they plotted against him. When they plotted against him, false accusation, embarrassment. He was jailed. When he was jailed, subhanallah, one after the other things happened. Four, five, six things. How many years? According to some narrations, it lasted 40 years. And when he came out of there, what happened? It's amazing what happened. If you take a look at that surah, the leader at the time made him in charge of the entire granary. He became a minister. He became a top man from where? From problem after problem after problem after problem. If it was one of us, we would have been lost. May Allah forgive us. We would have been depressed thinking Allah is upset with me. Allah is angry with me. And some go to the degree that they start saying, I think someone did some magic here. I think someone actually did something to me. I don't know what has happened. No, my brothers and sisters, it has happened to those who are better than you. Look at Muhammad, peace be upon him. What happened to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? There was a year known as Amul Huzn. Do you know that? It was known as the year of sadness. Imagine for the best of creation, he lost his uncle, subhanallah. He lost his wife, Khadija binti Khuwaylid radiallahu anha. What happened? He went to on gift upon gift on your sabr that you bear, on the patience, the forbearance, the restraint that you bear for the sake of Allah upon the hardship that Allah has placed in your life. He will grant you so many gifts that the ultimate gift will be Jannatul Firdaus. 
So your path to paradise will definitely be made easy when you are patient, when you pray to Allah, when you don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah, no matter what, you could have gone through a divorce, very, very sad situation. It's happening. It's not the end of the world. Get up and move on. You could have gone through the death of your spouse or your loved ones, your parents or your children. If you bear patience, Allah will grant you Jannah. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Indeed, Allah will grant the reward of those who bear patience without a limit, unlimited. بِلَا حِسَابٍ He's not going to hold an account to say, okay, one for one. No, a million for one, more for one. Bear patience, be patient. But while you are patient, you need to know something interesting. You know, Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun alayhi salam, when they made a dua because the Fir'aun was troubling them a lot, Allah says to them, Qad your dua has been answered by me allah is telling them now i want you to be steadfast you must be steadfast now with us revelation doesn't come but allah answers your dua all you need to do is be steadfast and don't follow the path of those who don't know who don't know what who don't know how allah works who don't know right from wrong who don't know what is good for them and what is not don't follow the path of those who don't know that allah will take care of you allah has responded to your dua i might make a dua today oh allah i'm looking for this i'm looking for a job i'm looking for a, for example a marriage i'm looking to save this i'm looking for this for that whatever it might be i promise you perhaps the dua is answered immediately but it is given to you when allah knows the time is right when allah knows the time is right if you understand that for you is jannah because now you have recognized allah you have recognized allah your success must drive you closer to allah and your failure must also drive you closer to allah remember this Many people, when they are successful, they forget Allah. Many people, when they fail, they also forget Allah. They become depressed. You know what happens? Sometimes Allah knows He wants us to come closer to Him. So He lets you taste failure. Even a simple examination. You thought you were very intelligent. Now suddenly there is failure. Why? He wants you to come closer to Him. Closer to Him. You get closer. So close. That was the mercy of Allah. Shaitan will keep coming to you and telling you, look, you are calling out to Allah. Allah is not answering you. You are calling out to Allah for how many years? Two years, three years. Allah is not responding. So why don't you just quit? Sometimes, astaghfirullah, a'udhu billah. Some people, they quit. If you quit, you lost your path to Jannah. If you quit, you lost your path to Jannah. But you need to remember, don't quit. Look at Ayyub alayhi salam. He was happy allah gave him wealth allah gave him children allah gave him so much and then when allah tested him his wife tells him why don't you call out to allah is there anything wrong nothing wrong you can call out to allah but ayyub alayhi salam was so happy that he said to his wife how many years have i enjoyed the gifts of allah so many years now the difficulty is such a short space of time i'm embarrassed to ask allah oh allah help me because he kept me happier for a longer time than i was sad but many of us unfortunately when something bad happens we turn to allah very quick and when it is sorted out we forget we're gone you ask allah oh allah help me i have this issue that issue and you are here for tahajjud before Salat al-Fajr, mashallah. Tahajjud, mashallah. And what happens? As soon as your problem is resolved, you are not even there for Salat al-Fajr. You are sleeping. Why? My problem is gone. So that was a gift of Allah that He brought you to the house of Allah. Don't go back. Your path to Jannah is to ensure that in your days of difficulty, you still get closer to Allah. And in your days of ease, you get closer to Allah. If you think you have wealth, 
you need to know there is someone who has more than you and they are closer to Allah than you are. If you think you have good looks, there is someone who looks more handsome, more pretty than you and they are closer to Allah. If you think that you have authority, there is someone who has higher authority than you and they are closer to Allah than you. And the reason I say this is for us to wake up that you know what? I am not something or someone. I am just like everyone else. We are all in the same boat. Subhanallah. We all want to go to Jannah. That's why we are seated in this beautiful house of Allah. May Allah grant us Jannah to Firdaus. Then we have a pillar of Islam known as Al Hajj. The Hajj, we are very fortunate, mashallah, it's the pilgrimage. Do you understand what Allah wants when He made it compulsory? He wants you to go back and look at those whom He loved more than you and I, and to follow their footsteps and to look at the difficulty and hardship they went through. Imagine how many of us, when it comes to Ramadan, we have water all over here, we have so much of food, we have so much of drink. Do we thank Allah? The answer is not really. To be honest, we can do better. We can do better. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalilullah, the friend of Allah, the one who was close to Allah, his own children, his wife, they did not have water to drink. Water. Did they give up hope? So Hajj is all about learning the lessons because it is so powerful. Allah says, It is the duty incumbent upon man from Allah for the sake of Allah to fulfill the Hajj for whoever is able and capable to do it. It's not just to go there, enjoy yourself, come back. There is no tourism there. It is rather to go there to learn lessons, to change your life. You will have to think about the sacrifice that was made by those who are truly people of Jannah. They are people of Jannah. What sacrifice they made? They were beloved unto Allah. Allah didn't just throw everything to them. If he wanted, he could have. But they went through hardship. Imagine the man who Allah loves. Allah spoke to him. Subhanallah. Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah befriended him. Allah says, Allahu Ibrahim khalila. Allah has taken Ibrahim as a khalil, as a friend. He left his wife there, his child there. He, Allah instructed him to go. He followed the instruction of Allah. What happened? Subhanallah. They never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. They continue to try and strive. They strive, they prayed, they tried. And he was also concerned, calling out to Allah, going out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leaving his family behind. And you know what? Something miraculous happened. The water started gushing. Such a powerful dua that up to this day, that water is still gushing. Subhanallah. Now remember, I have to balance the statement because one day there was a young man who abandoned his wife and children. He went away and the wife is complaining. She wants a divorce. So when they came to me, he said, look, I'm just following Ibrahim alayhi salam. <laughs> I said, my brother, you better be careful. You better be careful. He said, no, Allah will provide for them zamzam. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. My brothers and sisters, don't be lost. Don't be confused. Remember, we are not the prophets of Allah, but we only draw a lesson from there. Your duty, my duty, we must fulfill. You must try your best to look after your family members and you must make sure that you work hard. The point I'm raising is do not despair. Don't give up. Look at the sacrifice they made for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they lived in a place where there was no comfort or luxury, but they were the most loved unto Allah. Why? Their luxury shall be for them in Jannatul Firdaus. Their luxury shall be for them in Jannatul Firdaus with us. We are lucky. We are fortunate. We have luxury now. And if you work hard, you can have luxury there also. Tonight, we made a dua. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab nar You heard that dua. Oh Allah, give us goodness in the dunya. You see, we have to do that, isn't it? We want the goodness in this world and give us goodness in the hereafter and save us from hellfire. Subhanallah. Save us from hellfire. So it's good to have goodness, but not at the expense of the hereafter. When you have goodness, don't forget Allah. Sometimes it's too luxury, too comfortable. So come time for salah and we are thinking, oh, you know what? I'm going to have to get up, turn on the tap. I'm going to have to make wudu. Do it for Allah. 
There are others who are doing it in the desert. There are others who are doing it in the bush. There are people who walk five kilometers in Africa and in some third world countries just to get a bucket of water for their own houses. Every day they go. With us, turn on the tap. Subhan it's like a Jannah for them. If they were to look, they would say, what? Can you believe it? Subhanallah. If you want something great for you, work hard for the sake of Allah. Be generous. These are the five pillars of the deen. Remember to uplift them. You need to also develop your taqwa, your God consciousness. Become conscious of Allah. When there is a sin to be committed, say, no, Allah is watch watching. I am not going to commit this sin. When there is goodness to be done, be the first one to do it. Allah says very clearly, race with one another, compete with one another when it comes to khairat. What is khairat? Goodness, anything good, be there first. There is a good cause before someone else goes, you are already there, it's sorted out. Subhanallah. At least a few times in your life, you can do that. A few times, you can help quietly. You know, when we commit a sin, do we want people to watch that sin or to know about it? No. So when you do a good deed, keep some of them secret between you and Allah. Some deeds, few. Keep them secret between you and Allah. So when you meet with Allah, the day of Qiyamah, when the accounts are being taken, just like you did your sins behind closed doors, but Allah is always watching. Allah knows between me and this person, there is also a lot of good deeds that they've done. Only I know he knows. No one else knows. May Allah make it easy for us. May Allah grant us Jannah. So my brothers and sisters, we definitely need to understand and I want to end today. And I can tell you why I want to end. People were messaging me and this is something very interesting. People were messaging me, telling me, Sheikh, you know, today you must try and finish early. Okay. You see the young guys, they know why, right? So someone, some people were telling me that, you know, Astaghfirullah, how can they say this? I said, no, it's a sign that they are going to attend. Am I right? It's a sign they are going to come. So it's a good sign. I don't want to look at the negative. I want to look at the positive. The others, they might just say, I'm not even going. But at least some were telling me, Sheikh, you know what? Uh, we are going to come. But you know, Sheikh, you need to understand what's happening on the world today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. May Allah grant us goodness. So before we close, I need to mention something very interesting. If you want Jannah, you need to develop your akhlaq, your character, your conduct. Without character, there is no space for you in Jannah. That's why the hadith says, La yadkhulul jannata man kana fi qalbihi mithqala habbatim min khardalim min kibr. He will not enter paradise in whose heart there is even a mustard seed's weight worth of pride. Arrogance. When we talk of pride here, we talk of arrogance. No haughtiness. We are the same. You and I are all the same. We are equal. My brothers and sisters, develop your akhlaq. Number one, how you speak at home, change it for the better. I promise you, your life will change. Promise that to Allah now, and you will earn Jannah. Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says the best from you are those who are best to their wives, their family members. Many of us, we fall short in this regard, very far. Go home, speak nicely, make your home into a beautiful home. It's your children, your family members, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, your spouse, whoever it is, develop your akhlaq. You are opening your door to paradise. Those who work for you, with you, or those whom you work for, speak to them with respect, utmost respect. Treat them like human beings with utmost respect. They must feel like they are a VIP every time they speak to you. Then you are truly from Jannah. You are truly a person who is heavenly. May Allah grant that to us. So this issue of developing your character, it extends to your neighbors, those who are around you. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has warned us and encouraged us strongly to be kind to our neighbors, Muslim or non-Muslim, to be generous, to watch the path, the road, you know, there is a hadith. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Be careful of the two who are cursed. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum said, Who are those who are cursed? He said, Those who relieve themselves on the path of the people. Where people are walking, 
where people are using the road they want to put an obstacle in there of their own relieving they relieve themselves there and in another narration the prophet peace be upon him says one of the levels of iman is to remove a harmful object from the road where the people are going to pass why no matter who passes you save them you cared for them so i end in the same way that i started my brothers and sisters let's learn to care for one another let's learn to reach out to one another let's become better people let us definitely make a difference in our lives we need to develop our relation with allah after ramadan continue going don't stop don't think to, to yourself right i'm a muslim for one month 11 months it's okay now i'm fine no it's not like a season of a game where the season ends that's it no this is a run-up towards the rest of the 11 months you will be a better person than you were i promise you be honest be hard working get closer to allah work on improving yourself don't lose hope don't give up no matter what has happened and at the same time remember that you need to be concerned about those around you who were created by allah they were created by allah today we are seated in the masjid mashallah we see so many faces from different parts of the world perhaps this is a gathering where we will see the number of nationalities that we don't imagine in this gathering because allah has brought us together but we are all brothers and sisters just like i feel special to myself every single person feels special to himself or herself so give them that special moment mashallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. My brothers and sisters, in this way, inshallah, we would be able to earn Jannatul Firdaus. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanaka Allahum wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. Bismillah, 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 barakallah fiq. Bismillah, barakallah fiq. Bismillah, bismillah, barakallah fiq. Bismillah, bismillah. كيف الحال؟ لا زحمة شديدة والله لو لو طولنا هناك لا 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 ما في لو ليس فقط الوقت وإنما